Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Julian Barry, and today we have an incredible video in store for you guys. We have raw master chef, Crystal Bonnet. She's incredible and her recipes are some of the best I've ever seen in my entire life. And she's gonna demonstrate and show us how to make an amazing holiday recipe today. It is a white peppermint chocolate fudge. It looks insane, looks to die for. And from what I've heard, it's fairly easy to make, not super complicated. There's no dehydrator. So let's get right into it. Hey, Crystal, how's it going? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I've been wanting to connect for some time, so I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy to connect. And I have to say, literally, like, I'm not just saying this, your book, The Art of Raw Desserts. Congratulations on this book. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Just Literally, I've seen so many raw books. This is the nicest, most well put together, beautiful raw vegan oh. dessert book I've ever seen. And this, like, this Thank is insane. You. I wish I could show you guys everything in this book. It's just amazing. I'm so proud of you, so happy. And we're so honored to have you on today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I had an amazing publisher, and they have, like, they are the best to work with. So the collaboration between us, yeah, we were able to create something amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Well, I will hand it off to you to start the recipe. I'm so excited. And this is something great that people can make this holiday season. I will put you on the full screen. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Hi everybody. Thank you so much for being here today and watching this video. I really appreciate you diving into this recipe with me. So like Jillian said, we're making a white chocolate peppermint fudge. And this is one of my favorite recipes from the cookbook. It's also very simple. It has four components. So first we're gonna make the minted candied cacao nibs, and then we're gonna make the white chocolate fudge, and then we're gonna make the dark chocolate enrobing, and then we're gonna finish it off with a white chocolate sauce and garnish because I always like to add some kind of oomph to my recipes just to bring it up a notch and make them look beautiful for serving. Now, like I said, this recipe is really simple. We have no dehydrator, although I love dehydrating and I use a dehydrator a lot. It's an excellent appliance to have in your kitchen. Uh, this one is gonna be really simple to whip up for the holidays. If you're having a New Year's party, these are fun to put out on a platter. I actually just served them at my book launch party and everybody absolutely loved them. So we're gonna get right into it. So like I said, there's four components. So the first thing that you want to make is the candied cacao nib. Because we have to get these set in the freezer and process them down to use them in our white chocolate peppermint fudge. Now, if you don't want to do this step, this is optional. You can just use regular cacao nibs. But I like to add a little bit more flavor and texture to my recipes. So for the minted candy cacao nibs, it's really simple, just a few ingredients. It's basically just chocolate covered cacao nibs. Now, how I came up with this recipe was I love to use cacao nibs. If you don't know what cacao nibs are, this is what they look like. It's just the, basically the cacao bean after it's been dried and fermented, and it's just been crushed down into the nibs. Now, I love using the nibs a lot of my recipes to add texture. Sometimes I'll add them in crust or in fillings. And one of my students came to me once and she's like, I hate using the cacao nibs. They get stuck in my teeth, they're so hard to chew. And I was like, oh, thank you for the feedback. I'm like, we can fix that. Let's cover them in chocolate and they'll be much easier to eat. And then so when I came up with this, they became one of my favorite garnishes to use because they're basically like my healthy version of a chocolate chip. So that is how I came up with that. So we have the cacao nibs, we have some sweetener, and I'm melting down some chocolate. So now you're gonna see me, I have some chocolate to melt down for a few recipes. So you're gonna see me going back and forth with the water kettle and melting it down, but I wanna show you how I melt it down. So I use the double boiler method. And so what I do is I have a smaller bowl here and I just add water from a kettle, boiling water. And then I put a bowl on top like this to melt it down. This is the best fail safe method to melt down chocolate. You will not burn it this way. If you melt it down on a stove or in a microwave, you're most likely to burn it. Once chocolate is burned, it's totally unusable and you'll have to discard it because not only does it seize up and thicken, but it also will taste burnt. So please, if you're going to melt down chocolate, 
These are really good ingredients. I use all organic cacao, unroasted chocolate. We want to make sure that we're going to be treating it gently and carefully. So that's how I melt that down. So this chocolate has already been melted down. And I'm just going to grab a cloth. And when I take this off the water, you want to wipe it down with a cloth because moisture and chocolate do not mix. They do not like each other. So I'm going to make sure I move that out of the way. And I'm going to add the chocolate into the bowl here. So this is just melted down cacao butter and cacao paste. And you have the recipe there and you'll see that I'm using chopped cacao butter and chopped cacao paste. And I like to use paste because it's really smooth. But it also provides really nice thick texture and makes the chocolate a lot easier to work with. If you were to use cacao powder, you would have to sift it in or blend it to get out those clumps. Cacao paste, which is also called the cure or mass, it's like just the, do I have some here? Yeah. Let me show you what it looks like. So this is what cacao paste looks like. It's just the solid cacao mass. That's all it is. So it's a lot easier to use than the powder. So I use that for all of my, most of my chocolate making, I'll use powder and like fillings and whatnot. So what you wanna do, and this is a very important step, is you wanna make sure that the chocolate is not too warm at this point, because once we add in the cacao nib, if it's too hot, the chocolate is gonna start melting down the cacao nib, but we want them to stay formed for texture. So I am going to, this has been sitting for a while, so I know that it has cooled down enough. So I'm just gonna add in my cacao nib, and then I have some sweetener. Now you can use any sweetener that you're most comfortable with. I always say this when I'm doing recipe demos because sweeteners are very controversial, but also people react to sweeteners in different ways. Our bodies are so different. What works for me might not work for you. So. One of my favorite go-to sweeteners is coconut nectar because it's low glycemic, it's full of minerals. And for me, it just works really well and is a healthier sweetener. But if you like using agave or maple syrup, feel free to use that as well. Sometimes I like adding in coconut sugar for adding in texture into this recipe. But today we're just going to add in the liquid sweetener. So then I have some vanilla and I really love using the medicine flower vanilla extracts and they're really easy to get here in Canada and the US. They have them in the UK and also Australia. And these are really popular in the raw food world for extracts because they're non-GMO, they're CO2 extracted and alcohol free, which is really important for me. I don't like extracts with alcohol in them. If you can't get this, feel free to use vanilla extracts, vanilla powder, or like whatever you have at home, any kind of vanilla. And then we're going to bring this up a notch because this is the white chocolate peppermint flavor fudge. I want my candy cacao nib to have a little bit of a mint flavor as well. So I'm adding in some doTERRA peppermint essential oil. So this is a food grade peppermint essential oil. You just need a few drops. A little goes a long way. So we're going to add that in. And when you add that in and smell it, oh, this smells amazing. That peppermint essential oil is all, you know, really good for has many health benefits. So feel free to give it a sniff <laughs> before you put it in. It will clear your sinuses, your nostrils, and just give you a little bit of a jolt. So you'll see that it's starting to set already because it's kind of cold in here, but also we added in the liquid sweetener. So I want to get it into our container. So I have a flat container with some parchment paper in here. So I'm going to add this in just kind of like we're making chocolate bark, the same concept. I'm going to add this into the container. I just want to flatten it out a little bit so that it's a lot easier to set and takes quicker. Because this is going to have to be really set by the time we want to process it in the food processor down into nibs. So there we go. I just flattened it out a little bit on the parchment paper and you'll see that it's setting already and chocolate does that. It's gonna grab a lid. And I'm gonna put this, and you can put this in the fridge to set it. I'm actually gonna put this into the freezer just to make sure that it's set in time, in the time that we need to use it for the recipe. I'm just gonna pop this in. Oh, my freezer is so full, it's hard to fit anything in there. <laughs> so many desserts, too many desserts. Okay, 
And now we are going to get started on the fudge. So I need to just melt down the cacao butter. So I'm just going to start doing that. And it takes really quick. So if you don't know what cacao butter is, this is what cacao butter looks like. So this is the fat from the cacao beans. And this is our setting agent. So cacao butter is used in raw desserts, not just for chocolate making, but also for, as a setting agent, because as you can see at room temperature or when it's cooled, it goes solid, right? So cacao butter is a much stabler setting agent than coconut oil, because coconut oil, as you can see at room temperature, is quite soft, where cacao butter is very firm. So if you live somewhere really warm or tropical, it's best to use a little bit of cacao butter in your cakes or frostings or fillings when you're making raw desserts just to make them more stable at room temperature. So I'm just gonna get my ingredients for the white chocolate fudge part. And we have some cashews that I just have to rinse. I'm just gonna grab a strainer. So it's important to soak your cashews before you use them so that they're soft enough for blending. So I just had some cashews soaking for about two hours. And then you wanna drain and rinse them really well before you use them. And that's gonna be the base of our white chocolate peppermint fudge. I'm just waiting for the kettle there. I'm just making sure I have all of my ingredients out in front of me. And this is going to be the fun part. I'm going to show you how chocolate works, cacao butter, and it's going to be a fun process in the blender. So while the cacao butter is melting down, I'm going to go over the ingredients with you for the white chocolate peppermint fudge. So like I said, the base is going to be cashews. So I just have them draining here. So we have some soaked cashews. For a sweetener, I'm going to be using two different kinds of sweetener. Now, the reason why I do this, I'm using a dry sweetener as well as a liquid sweetener because this is going to help with the texture that I want to create. Now, I'm going to be using a light amber agave, which is a light sweetener, light colored, because I don't, if I'm using coconut sugar or coconut nectar, it's going to darken the recipe. And I like to have a little bit of white in there because like I said, it's a white chocolate peppermint fudge. So I'm looking for more of the aesthetic. And then I have some xylitol, which is a sugar alcohol. It's super low glycemic. It's only a seven on the glycemic index. If you don't do well with xylitol, you can use erythritol or lecanto. Again, like I said, whatever works for you. Or if you don't like sugar alcohols at all, then you can use coconut sugar, but just keep in mind, it's gonna turn the mixture caramel color. And then we have some lacuma powder. So lacuma powder is a Peruvian fruit that smells almost like the Lipton iced tea. I don't know if you guys remember those Lipton iced tea packets. I don't know, like, if you're really young, that it might be like way before your time, but this is what lacuma powder reminds me of, that smell, but it's a little bit of a sweetener. I just like to add in my recipes, you'll see that I always have some kind of superfood in there. I like sneak them in somewhere to add an extra boost of nutrition because lacuma is really high in iron, minerals, phosphorus, so it's really, really good for you. So I just like to add that in. It's going to give us a flavor boost and just a little bit of sweetener. And then I have some vanilla again, and then some of the peppermint extracts we're going to add in, the story of the peppermint essential oil. And then the key to the fudge is we're going to add in some warm water, but we'll go through that when we get there. So I'm just going to see how our cacao butter is doing. And it is melting down. It melts pretty quickly. You want to make sure that the cacao butter or cacao paste has been chopped if it doesn't come in those uh, tiny little droplets. 
So you want to make sure that it's hot so that it melts it down because otherwise it will take a really long time. And I have learned my lesson a lot with that. So we're going to be using a blender to make the white chocolate pepper at five. And I use a Vitamix, which is a high-speed blender. Uh, there's so many amazing high-speed blenders on the market now. And really inexpensive Vitamix is now available. So I just like to make sure that everything is smooth. I don't know how this recipe would work with a non-high-speed blender. It would probably be really difficult to blend because we want the cashews to be really, really smooth, right? So whenever I'm blending anything in the Vitamix, I always like to add in my liquids first. This is just going to help all of the solid ingredients and whatever I put on top get down into the blades and just blend a lot easier. So then I'm gonna add in my coconut oil. So I'm using in this recipe, I'm using a mix of coconut oil and cacao butter because of the texture that I want to achieve. I don't wanna use all cacao butter because I don't want the fudge to be super firm. I want some softness and fudginess to the texture. So it just works really well adding both of the cacao butter and the coconut oil. So then I can start adding in my dry ingredients. And then by now the coconut oil should have, sorry, the cacao butter should have melted down, yes. Yeah. Perfect. It melts down pretty quickly. I'm going to wipe that away. Move this aside so we have our, you probably can't see that there, but you'll see it when I put it into the blender. So we're going to add in our peppermint essential oil, and you only need six drops. Because like I said, it's really strong and a little goes a long way. Whenever I'm doing any kind of chocolate recipe, I always add in vanilla because vanilla and chocolate, I mean, to me, you just have to have vanilla with chocolate, the two marry so well together. Then we can add in our cacao butter. So we're adding in all of the ingredients except for the warm water. We're gonna add that in last. And you'll see why when we get there. And I'm adding in just a tiny pinch of high mineral salt just to flavor balance and just tone down a little bit of the sweetness. So we're gonna blend this up and make sure it's smooth before adding in the water. Now I just wanna show you, as you can see towards the end there, it started getting really thick as I was blending. So because we, I don't know if you can see, maybe from this angle, you can see there's a little bit of splitting happening between the coconut oil and the cacao butter. Because obviously, as we know, oil and oils is a mix, right? We need an emulsifier. So this is why we, add, when it gets to that point, like, don't worry, you'll see it splitting and breaking. It starts looking grainy. Don't worry, this is why we add in the warm water because the warm water is gonna emulsify those ingredients and it's gonna get really smooth and creamy. But it's important to use warm water. So I always take the water and I test it on the back of my wrist. You don't want it too cold and you don't want it too hot. So make sure you just find that in between warm stage. Now I'm just also melting down more cacao butter while we're doing this. I'm just going to get some warm water here. Okay, perfect. So then what I like to do is I will put the blender back on and I'll put it just on low speed. Because this is already blended. You can really see it splitting now, right? This is already blended. I don't need to put it on high speed and blend it even more. So I'm going to just stream in the warm water and you'll see that as it's mixing it starts to emulsify perfect okay see so you see that i only blended it for a few seconds if you keep blending it it will split again so don't blend it for too long and now you can see that it's really nice and creamy 
it's emulsified, looks really creamy, and it smells amazing, of course. <laughs> smells so good with the peppermint. So now what we're going to do is we need to add in our Kenny's cannons, but they're still setting in the freezer, so they're going to be set soon. So I'm just going to set this aside because also we have to wait for this mixture to cool down before we add in our candy cacaos because if I add them in now while this is warm, the candy cacaos are just going to start melting, which is fine and it will give a really nice marble look, but I'd like to have that contrast between the nibs and the white chocolate. It looks kind of like a cookie dough texture. So I'm just going to set this aside and then get my area set up for chopping up the nibs and processing them down. And I'm just melting down. So while you're doing that at home, or you're gonna have to wait for the white chocolate peppermint by to anyways to set overnight. But right now I'm just melting down some cacao butter for the white chocolate sauce that we gonna be using as a garnish. So I just have that on the side. I'm just gonna check on the candy cacao nibs to see if they're set. Yes, they are. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab a couple things here. And I just have to switch out my equipment to a food processor. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to chop down our set cacao nibs and then we're going to process them in the food processor to process them down into a crumble to use as our healthy chocolate tip. Now, whenever I'm working with chocolate, I just like to use some disposable gloves because our the warmth from our hands is going to start melting the chocolate down. And we don't want that to happen. I'm going to take my set. Peppermint, nib, cacao here. And this is, you know, this is also a fun way to make chocolate bark, right? It's the same kind of concept. So you can use that chocolate recipe for anything, really. It's a really good base chocolate recipe. We're going to be using it again to make our enrobing chocolate. So it's really important, you want to chop this down as much as you can before you add this in your food processor, or else it's going to be really difficult to process and just, you know, you want to be gentle with your food processor, not make it work too hard. I'm going to start adding this in. And I always say, if you're just starting out with raw food, spend, invest, I don't like to say spend your investing, you're investing in this equipment, you're investing in your house, invest in a really good blender and you can totally cheap out on the food processor. I used a $40 food processor from Amazon for four years before I finally upgraded to the Cuisiner. And you do want a food processor because this is how we make like crust and process anything down like raw flowers, especially if you're making raw desserts. So, yeah, cheap out on the food processor if you don't have one, but make sure you don't cheap out on the blender. So I'm just going to pulse this. And you want to do this until it forms a fine tumble. So 
but there's a trick here. You don't want to over process it either. So this looks good to me. These are our healthy chocolate chips. I'm so excited. And then any extra ones that you have on hand, you can add. I love adding them on top of my smoothies, on ice cream and granola. They are super versatile. So this is what they look like. So it's just blended down, processed down now into a crumble. Stuck to the sides a little bit there. Probably it could have set for a little bit uh, for a little bit longer in the freezer. But that's fine. We're still gonna work with it here. Now the fun part, I'm gonna show you how to put the fudge and the nibs together. So I'm just gonna put this aside. I'm gonna grab our white chocolate peppermint fudge. I'm gonna add this into a bowl. Just to let it cool down a little bit more. So I can feel it's just still a little bit warm. Mm. So creamy and delicious. Smells amazing. Okay. So I'm gonna start adding in the nibs. Let me just feel this. This is okay, but I just wanna show you how creamy and delicious that looks. So I'm just gonna start adding them in now. You're gonna, I'm just eyeballing it, but you're gonna to wanna to measure if you're doing this at home. And then I'm just breaking them up a little bit more as I'm putting them in here. Smells so good. I wish that we had smell-o-vision. You can see how fun this is starting to look already. Oh, so good. Delicious. So now look at that fun color contrast and texture. I'm gonna put this aside. And now to make the fudge, I love to use, we're gonna mold it. I love to use a mini brownie silicone mold because when you think of fudge, you think square pieces, right? Cause that's how it's usually served and sold and square pieces. But I like to use mold as much as I can because they form everything really even and nice and they just look so much better. So we're gonna be using this mini brownie silicone mold. You can get it on Amazon. It's really easy to get, you just Google mini brownie silicone mold. That's literally what it's called. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding the filling into the mold, but you'll see what I'm gonna do here. I'm not gonna do this very clean and neat and you'll see why. You don't need to. We're just gonna start pouring this on top. This is gonna fill almost every single cavity in this mold. Because you don't want to take the time. It's a lot of work if you try to fill every single one perfectly. I mean, just who has time for that? <laughs> Not me. Especially when you're making so many desserts, right? So then what we're going to do, we're going to take our spatula and we're just going to scrape the filling across, just filling them up. And I know that this filled 23, there's 24 in here. So this fills 23 perfectly. And then you might get a little bit, the 24th one there. And this is how I make all my fudge. So you'll see if you get a copy of the cookbook, I have two different fudge recipes in there. We have this one, the white chocolate peppermint fudge, but then I also have an orange hazelnut fudge with 
made with candied hazelnut, dark chocolate orange, which is also a really fun festive one to do as well. And we also use a silicone mold for that as well. Oh, and look, this actually filled up 24 perfectly. Beautiful. Love it. Of course, I have some made for you all today already because this has to set overnight. See, so this is just a really simple process to fill up the mold. So this is what it looks like. So then what you wanna do, you wanna make sure before you do that, that this is on some kind of cutting board or tray because otherwise it's gonna be really hard to transfer this onto a tray, make sure it's on there already. And then we're just gonna tap it on the counter just to remove some of the air bubbles. And then what you wanna do is you wanna set this in the freezer overnight because you want them to be really firm to get them out of the mold. So I'm just gonna place this in my fridge actually for now. So now what we need to do is we need to start working on the dark chocolate because we're gonna enrobe them before we decorate them. So let me get the dark chocolate melted down. All right, see that was super simple, easy. We have our fudge setting. And now we're gonna make the chocolate to enrobe them. So I'm just gonna get set up for that. Okay, so we're gonna make our own healthy raw vegan chocolate. Now, when I say raw vegan chocolate, in reality, cacao is actually not fully raw because during the fermentation process, it reaches over and above the 48 degrees Celsius raw threshold. But it is a healthier version than cocoa because if it's called cacao as opposed to cocoa, then it is unroasted. So it's from unroasted beans. They have been, you know, not heated at a really high temperature. I prefer the flavor of cacao. It's sweeter, it's milder. You'll notice that cocoa looks really, really dark. And to me, it, it tastes a lot more bitter than cacao. So there is a lot more nutrients and uh, minerals and everything left in the cacao. So it's just a healthier alternative. And I like to source. So cacao is just a much better alternative than cocoa. And I like to, I like to source an organic, sustainable cacao. So if you can, that's great. There's a couple amazing suppliers here in Canada. I source it from real raw food or organic matters. So if you're going to be buying a lot of bulk ingredients like nuts and seeds, and superfood powders, you definitely want to buy everything in bulk. You're going to save almost triple the amount of money that you would spend at buying at retail. There is shipping involved, but the shipping is really minimal. There's actually introduced a lot more uh, cost efficient shipping options now. So I always like to buy as much as I can to save money and buy in bulk. So this is melting down pretty quickly. And so I'm melting down the butter in the paste because this is our going to be our vegan dark chocolate that we're going to be using for enrobing. But this is, again, an amazing base recipe that you can use for anything. So if you want to make your own chocolate, uh, if you want to make your own chocolate, chocolate bark or anything that has chocolate, if you want to use chocolate as a garnish, then you want to use this recipe. So I like to use a ratio of three parts paste to one part butter. And that's because I get a really nice thick consistency. But if, but then the chocolate is really dark, but I really prefer dark chocolate. If you don't like really dark chocolate, then you can play around with the ratios. You can do two parts butter, one part paste. I mean, whatever, or even equal, equal 50-50. You can play around with that at home and see what works best for you. Just keep in mind when you lower the paste ratio, the thinner the chocolate becomes, and then it's going to be harder to work with. I like it to be a bit thicker because when we're enrobing, it's going to make a nice clean finish on our fudge. This is almost done melting down here. So while the chocolate is still on the heat, that's when I like to add my liquid sweetener. 
Because like I said in the beginning, liquid and chocolate don't mix well together. So when it's on the heat, it's going to mix into the chocolate a lot easier. So I'm just gonna stir that in. And make sure it's well incorporated. And then of course, we're gonna be adding in some vanilla again into our chocolate. Okay, so that's really simple. Our chocolate is just four ingredients, cacao butter, cacao paste, vanilla, and sweetener. And like I said in the beginning, you can use whatever sweetener you prefer. I'm using coconut nectar because it's my favorite sweetener. So now we're gonna start enrobing the fudge. All right. So when you are enrobing, so enrobing just generally means covering something in chocolate, okay? It's just a fancy word used in the, in the pastry world for covering something in chocolate. And this is how we're going to cover the fudge. Now you're gonna want a little bowl to put the chocolate in that we're gonna use for dipping. I'm also using a chocolate dipping fork. You don't have to use the fancy chocolate dipping fork. You can just use a regular dinner fork, but this does make it a lot easier because you can see the prongs are really thin and the chocolate is gonna be able to drip and we're gonna get a cleaner finish on that. And then you're gonna want a tray or a cutting board with some parchment paper on top because this is where we're gonna add the fudge once, once they've been covered in chocolate and then we're gonna decorate them here as well. So I just like to get my flow ready here. We're gonna add the chocolate into our bowl and I like to leave the fudge in the freezer for as long as I can. You want to pull the fudge out of the freezer right before you start enrobing them. You want them to be cold and they're going to be a lot easier to get out of the mold. I will grab the fudge. So here I already have some that's been set for you and they pop out of the mold really easily and for this you do want to have some gloves well that one was a little here we go i'll show you so this is what they look like when they're set they're really fun because you can see the texture of the cacao nibs in there and we still have that white chocolate look so it does go a lot lighter once it's been frozen so this is our fudge and we're just going to dip it into the chocolate super simple you want to dip it in with the base down because then we're going to take it out the same way. So this is how you do that. And you're just going to let some of the excess chocolate drip off or you can scrape it on the sides like that. And then I just like to wiggle it off the fork onto our board. So there is our first chocolate covered fudge. Very simple. Well, these ones are coming out weird. These look absolutely insane. They look so freaking good. Oh my goodness. They look so good, Crystal. You are as professional as it gets. I love it. And you teach courses too, right? Yes. So I have online courses that I have. Yeah, I have uh, their self-paced online courses. You can learn all about raw food, raw dessert. I have a savory course because I do savory as well. Yeah. So you can come learn with me and learn how to make all this stuff at home or if you want to do a business out of it. I have lots of students who start their own raw dessert businesses, their own raw cake businesses. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I've been teaching online since 2019 and it's been an amazing journey. It's been really fun connecting with all the students and all the like-minded people around the world. And um, yeah, I absolutely love it. So I'm not gonna do these all for you because otherwise we're gonna be here a while. So I'm just doing some just to show you the process. And you can see because these are cold, they're already starting to set. So this is what I love about enrobing because once you're done enrobing this whole batch, they're all done and set and then the fudge in the middle is the perfect consistency thawed perfectly enough so then you can just start eating them. 
if you're not, you know, making them for somebody or serving them or you want to save some for other people in your household, try not to eat them all. <laughs> so I'm just going to do just a few more here just to show you. And this chocolate smells delicious. And like I said, you can use a regular dinner fork for this, but these dipping forks are really inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon and they come in a pack of three. If you're gonna be making a lot of chocolate at home, I would really highly recommend just getting them. I'm gonna do one more for you. Because then we have to make our white chocolate sauce quickly, which is a really simple step. We're just going to be blending a few ingredients. We want to make these just look extra special, professional, and gorgeous. Okay. Let me just put this aside for you. So we're gonna make our white chocolate sauce. Like I said, it's a really simple recipe. We're just gonna blend a few ingredients. And this is a really fun garnish. I like to use on, I use it on the top of cakes, to marble cakes. I'll make fun designs on top of slices or brownies. Uh, so feel free to use this garnish however you like. It's very, very versatile. Perfect. So we are going to make our white chocolate sauce. Like I said, this is a really simple recipe. So we just have our soaked cashews. And then we're going to add in our melted cacao butter. Because this is, you know, we want it to be a chocolate flavor. This is a white chocolate sauce, which is why I'm using cacao butter. I've already melted that down. And then I have a quarter cup of water and some vanilla, and that is it. Super simple recipe. And then we're just gonna blend that up until it's smooth. So I just want to make a note, if it's getting hard to blend, you can just add in a little bit more water. So I'm just going to scrape everything down. Into here. I'm just going to add a little bit more water just to smooth it out. I'm just going to scrape down the sides a little bit. And I just want to show you these spatulas really quick. These are amazing for the Vitamix. This is actually called a Vitamix spatula. You can get them on Amazon as well. 
And they're just super handy because they get everything in the blade and in between. And I'm so picky about getting stuff, everything out of the blender. So that looks good. It's nice and smooth and smells amazing. So then what you want to do is you want to put this in a squeeze bottle or you can use a piping bag. So if you don't have a squeeze bottle at home, you can just use a piping bag to do this as well. This is just a squeeze bottle I use for garnishing and I just get this on Amazon as well. We're just going to pour this in. Because we're going to use this to drizzle a pretty design on top of the fudge. All right. So now we're gonna finish these off and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of fresh mint to use as a garnish. Have some fresh mint here. Okay, so this is the really fun part. <laughs> it's almost all fun. So we have our beautiful enrobed fudge here. So now I'm just gonna do a little test and we're gonna create a zigzag pattern on top of the fudge. And I'm just going to start from one corner and go to the opposite corner and just zigzag it just like that. Really simple. But what this also does, and what I love about this, is it also hides any imperfections that you had while you were enrobing the chocolate. My daughter just came in. She said, that looks so good. I want that, Mom. It looks so good, right? Oh, Crystal, this is I wish like, I could send you some. This is out of this world. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. So that is what they look like once they have the white chocolate sauce on there. So then what I like to do, so what you can do is you can serve this just like this. If you want to set the white chocolate sauce, you don't have to, then you can set these in the freezer or the fridge. But I like to just serve them like this because I just really like the texture of the chocolate sauce on the chocolate. I'm such a texture person. and You'll see my recipes. I'm always using so many different kinds of texture. It makes such a difference. So I like to just add a little bit of fresh garnish. I only ever use edible garnishes on my desserts. So everything you see in the cookbook and everything I make, anything that has been placed on the dessert is edible. It's really, really important when you're, when you're making food. Always tricky trying to find the perfect pieces of mint, the perfect size. Just have a couple more. So now what I want to do, I want to give you a really nice view of these. So I'm going to put them on a nice plate. And I'm going to just grab a little offset spatula here and just transfer them onto here. If you have an offset spatula at home, they're so handy to use. If you don't have one, like again, they're really inexpensive on Amazon. They're great for raw dessert making. So 
So there we go. There is our beautiful fudge. I will give you a nice view of that. Wow. Spectacular. This couldn't be any better. You're, I swear, like perfection with raw foods. Like this, <laughs> everything from your kitchen to you to the presentation, the professional to the food, like oh, everything thank is just you. so incredible. You're like truly like thank following you. like your gift, your passion, your purpose. This is crazy. These are amazing. Thanks so much for sharing them with us. Thank you. You're welcome. I do have to show you what they look like inside though. So I just want yeah. to cut one open really quick. I'm going to really have to make amazing. these. These look incredible. And all the recipes. Yeah, make them. What are some of Please. your favorites in this book? Like you have donuts oh in gosh. here even, don't you? I'm looking at these donuts. I'm just yeah. like, oh Everyone my gosh. Everyone me that. And it's, it's so hard. I never. So this is what the inside of the fudge looks like. Wow. It's fun seeing all the texture and the colors. Yeah, it's really hard, you know, to pick a favorite because it's like, look at this. I don't know what this is called. Blackberry ginger lime. Look at this, guys. I don't know if you can yeah. see. Wow. The blackberry ginger lime zebra cake. Zebra cakes are super fun and they're Every actually really easy. Everybody I show this book to, they're like, what? This stuff is raw. They're just like, they can't believe it. Yeah, here's these donuts I was talking about. These look insane. Yeah. Yeah, so those are uh, dehydrated donuts and they have a really cakey texture. And actually what really helps with that in the base is using zucchini. Wow, interesting. Yeah, there so was, I, okay. I always, these, sorry, I have to show these. These are like insane too. Yeah, the too. key lime pie. So one of my favorites in the book is the double chocolate red velvet brownies. Wow. And I use, I use real beets in there in that one. And Everybody is obsessed with that recipe and my husband takes them to work and his coworkers go crazy over them. Wow. I have so many favorites. Like the tiramisu cake is next level. If you want to do a celebration cake. Even this um, cake, this one looks really good. Yeah. The ice cream cake. These are just like, every recipe is like, wow, wow. Like I'm obsessed. And yeah, this book, yeah. so I'm not sure when this video will be posted, but it's part of my Christmas giveaway. So thank you so much for giving one of those crystals. So somebody, if you guys haven't entered that, then make sure you go enter that. It's on my channel, the Christmas giveaway. It's like, it also has a Nama. I see you use a Nama in your kitchen too. I love the Nama. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I love it. It's the best. If you guys want to save on a Nama, I'll put my code below. It's the best juicer. This one's so nice too. Look at this. Yeah. That's a super fun one. And if you want to get more into the, you know, more of the techniques and a little bit more advanced, doing the entremets is a lot of fun. Yeah. But well, do you have a copy for yourself? Like you have a copy for the giveaway, but do you have a copy? No, for you? I don't have a copy for myself. I was going to oh, get one. I was, I should have said to me, I, oh shoot. I should have, I'll get you one. Don't worry. I'm gonna Are you one. sure? That's amazing. I yeah. Would love yeah. That. Yeah. No, you well, need a copy. Yeah. Thanks. That's so nice. I would love that. I'm going to make some stuff and I'd love to have you back again for something. If you'd want to come back, I'm sure yeah, my viewers, of course. Yeah. I just love you. I think you're amazing and you're so genuine and you really well, put like you. care and love into your food and into your dishes. It's just a really a beautiful, magical thing. And I love it. And the world needs it. And you're amazing. So Thank Thanks you. for coming on. Yeah, I'm excited. And I hope you guys go try this recipe. It looks great. I hope you truly, if there's one book you're going to get, I swear you guys, this is the best book. It is so nice and beautiful and I highly recommend it. It's awesome. And I, it's just such an honor to have you on Crystal and where can everybody find you? And I'll link everything down below as well. Sure. So they can find me all of my social media handles and my website is called Crystal Dawn Culinary. And so you can see it here, D-A-W-N. Dawn is actually my middle name. <laughs> it just sounded so much better than using my last name. <laughs> so it's, it's Crystal Dawn Culinary on everything. And yeah, you can find me there. And please connect with me if you're running into any issues with the recipe, if you try it at home. If you do make it, I would love to see a remake of it. Take me on social media or I have a public Facebook group called Chefs of Crystal Dawn Culinary. You can post it in there and even ask questions in there. So yeah, I'd love to connect with you and really hope that you try this out and enjoy it as much as me. Yeah, I hope you guys do too. I'm sure you will, but definitely come back. Let us know how you like it. And if you want to see Crystal back, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up right now and be sure to subscribe if you don't already for more great videos just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.